What if the future was already here? What if the future was Aptera? What if I got to see it more than once? What if I get to see it a second time? And what if I get to talk with the folks in charge once again? I'm Brian, welcome to my Tesla weekend. How are ya? Good, Brian, how are you? Oh my gosh, it's looking so good. I understand you got the wind tunnel testing uh, underway. Yeah, we, uh, we got lucky and Penn and Farina had some time to put us in their wind tunnel. We got to do a little initial testing. It was a little rush, so we, uh, we didn't have it set up like a real aero study, but we, we got some really good data out of it, some good pressure maps, some good yaw data. Uh, and it was just cool to be in the same wind tunnel that was designed by Alberto Morelli, who designed the cambered body that gave us the idea of, oh, we need a hump in our back so we can actually pull the high pressure in front of the vehicle to the rear and actually neutralize the main body of the vehicle aerodynamically. Because that was a question I had is, you do have a, the shape of the body is a bit of a wing and you have to neutralize the, so you're not getting pushed down too hard at speed or, or lifted up. And that's a, a, a very real concern. Yeah, the big thing about this body in general is ground effect. The high pressure in front of a wing when you're in an airplane and in the air can go around the wing in any direction. Right. But when you're a wing on the ground, the high pressure in front of the wing can only go up. It can't go down. It basically bounces off the ground. So what do you do with that excess buildup under, underneath the nose? Because it has nowhere to go. Well, if you can create a vacuum towards the rear of the vehicle, you can basically suck that high pressure zone out. Yeah. And then you can neutralize what would normally be a pretty high drag shape. That's great. That's great. So uh, how are we looking on first deliveries is what everyone in the comments keeps asking me. We hope to have our first validations by the end of the year. We're actually commissioning all the body tooling now in Italy. Oh, great. The big uh, carbon fiber SMC tools. They weigh like 8,000 pounds and they're these big dies that come together to make the parts. We've actually produced our first production body part. It's actually the cover that covers this latch here. We made this into a separate piece and that's the first production piece that's come out of our new molds at CPC in Italy. The next mold they're gonna commission is probably gonna be the body side. So very soon we'll have body sides and uh, in just a couple months we'll basically have a whole body structure that is production ready, ready for validation of the drivetrain and the battery pack and the safety systems and all that. And that'll probably take another six months. So we're hoping to hand somebody the keys to a new Aptera by next summer. There's no homologation in the US on these. I could sell you this vehicle today. You could take it to Progressive Insurance. You could get a stated value insurance policy on it. You can register it with a DMV and you can be driving it tomorrow. Okay. And uh, you're targeting just US deliveries at launch? Just, well, we, we have a, an accelerator program mm -hmm. to where the first 2,000 production slots go to people that invest more than $10,000 in our crowdfunding. And those people. How do oh. I get it out? Oh, is the power on or is the power off? The power's off, I think. Oh. Um, there's, a, there's a little bar under your seat. Can you scoot your seat forward like three inches? There we go. There's a manual release back here. So the neat thing that they're doing. It's uh, not really. Not really a production intent thing. There'll be a manual release down here in the production version. Oh, okay. So the way they get you to, to, to stay faithful to Aptera is by not letting you out of the car. <laughs> the power's not on, so again, you know, we should have turned the power on. You gotta tell people not to close the door if the power's not on. The, it's, it's still absolutely gorgeous. No one's gonna deny that. You're thinking six months-ish. Validation vehicles by the end of the year. Then we actually have to go through durability validation calibration. Sure. We don't think that we'll feel comfortable handing somebody the keys to an Aptera until next summer. Next summer. We could hand somebody the keys at the end of this year, but it, would be, a, it would be an unrefined, you, you want un, it to unvalidated be vehicle, yeah. And on the price, we're still targeting 26 base. 26.9 base. The launch edition is 33.5. That gets you 400 miles of range, all the solar and all wheel drive. All the solar and all wheel drive, yeah. okay. And how's your cash situation doing? What's the situation? cash situation? Uh, we're, we're feeling really good that we've got enough money in the bank to you know, really push things forward and the crowdfunding that we've been able to raise. We've, we're already in the most successful crowdfunding in history. Uh, we're hoping to extend that in the next six months, basically raise crowdfunding money, take on some debt, some equipment financing, Sure. Um, and uh, and hopefully find some bigger investors over the next six months. The, the markets, I think, have kind of loosened up uh, the last three months, and I think we're starting to have more positive conversations with higher dollar investors. We're also still talking with some big investors that could fund the whole program. Uh, Steve's over in the Middle East right now on a trip to discuss uh, some oh, possible Oh, they have some support. money over there? 
They, you know, Europe and Asia and the Middle East seem to be deploying capital. Uh, the, on, but you're, you're the not U.S. is not. <laughs> you're not kidding, though. The last year for for fundraising, for bond raise, for for just even for IP. I mean, it's been tough. It seems that it tight. seems like some IPOs are on the docket now. So I think the equity markets will hopefully loosen up. Uh, but really, the debt markets is what are taking off because interest rates are high. So. So talk to me about how much carbon fiber we're looking at. It's everything, right? Uh, in the production vehicle, the whole tub and all of this will be carbon fiber. And you'll see the exposed carbon fiber on the side panels and in the rear. The, uh, the interior covers don't start until the headliner, which will cover up the, uh, the actual holder for the seat belt and then extend all the way to the A-pillars here. But everything else will basically be exposed. We don't want to cover it because it adds weight, it adds complexity. Um, and it's you know not as durable. You got parts, extra parts to worry about, damaging coming off and the like. So we're trying to keep it super Spartan, super simple. Focus on the user experience. So the feel of the steering wheel, the eyes forward vision system, the usability of the touchscreen. We decreased the touchscreen from a 15.6 to a 12.8 inch screen. Mm -hmm. The screen kind of overwhelms the interior. Yeah. And we weren't getting much usability because you can't really reach all the way to the other side of the screen oh, anyways. Oh, sure. That's a good point. So 12.8 tested really well, and we decided to go with that. It makes it a little smaller. It gets it out of the knee area, too, so bigger people don't hit their sure, knees. Sure, sure. Um, and we actually uh, put the rear vision system um, all the way up into a plastic bucket up here. We included the vision system, the lights, the, the microphone, and the hazard switch all in one plastic bucket. And that actually moves this up about an inch and a half. So when you say you the rear vision system, you mean that's a TV screen that has a yeah, camera? this is a screen, and when you back up, it shows you the lines to back up. Yeah, and right. uh, this is actually a production unit that's in uh, Lexus and GM yeah, vehicles. Yeah, I've seen and, I've seen the Toyota version. Yeah. The rear change is we actually changed the rear hatch, so the rear hatch actually closes over the rear of the vehicle. So we took this part line all the way to the back, and this actually stretches all the way to the back, and we were able to add about another 10 solar cells by doing that. Ah. We also made it so you don't have to worry about scratching this part because it'll just be exposed carbon fiber and this will be the finished part. So you open it up, you can load your construction material or whatever you're delivering or get in and out for camping or your dog can get in and out without, have, without having to worry about scratching this stuff. Now a lot of people don't know, but did you hear that some people have started adopting NACS as their standard. Do you, now, who was the first company that did that? I don't remember. It was Aptera. It was Aptera. In they the lead by far. started a petition a year and a half before the big announcement? 42,000 people signed our petition. Probably a lot of people watching this video. Thank you so much. And we think that put a big enough bug in uh, Elon's ear to start the conversation with other manufacturers and he opened up the standard. We actually petitioned the government to make the Tesla standard the North America charging standard. And it's, it's funny that it actually came out and they called it the, the North, North American, American charging, charging standard. standard. So I don't, I don't want to take full credit for the name, but I, I probably... Well, the good news is I won't let you because uh, those conversations were ongoing. It was just a matter of time. But I will give you credit for pushing them over the edge because... Uh, I think the conversations were, how do we open up the supercharger network to CCS adapters? Mm -hmm. And that's what the other... That's what that was... That was what was... The magic dock. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think pushing the NAC standard and saying this is superior engineering is what caused other companies to say, you know, this plug is dumb. <laughs> we well, should be yeah. using the Tesla plug. And the magic dock, I don't know if you know much about docking, but don't Google it. Uh, <laughs> so the, uh, what, uh, and yeah, here we go. Oh, silky smooth. And screen. all its resplendent glory. And this is the perfect spot, of course, because this is the... Yeah, and this we, is an easily replaced piece, should uh, it be this damaged. Is. So if you, if you yeah, got yeah. in a little accident, you take this off. But it's actually to get the, the side wheel cover off if you have to change your tire. You take this off and the front section off, and you undo two bolts there and two bolts on top, and then you can take the cover off. So what did, what, you know, my viewers, I'm sure you will know, want to know, what was Sandy's contribution? What did he do that made this better? simpler, whatever. Uh, Sandy Monroe and Monroe and Associates are lean manufacturing experts. They go to companies that have products that aren't being produced in an efficient enough manner. They're not making enough money because their bill of materials is too high. And Sandy goes to that company and says, well, take out these parts, use this method to make this part instead of the other method because it's cheaper, reduce your fasteners, simplify the part design. We came to Sandy very early on when we were just architecting the vehicle. So he loves us because most of the companies come to him after it's all messed up and they say, can you fix it? And then he has to send in like a tiger team to fix it. 
we're, we're starting from scratch and he helped us refine the body into just six major components that are easily bonded together. He helped us make the vehicle into subsystems so we're not reliant to put every part on the vehicle. We have sub-assemblies that can be built by contract manufacturers, shipped to us, we put it on the vehicle, a couple screws, a couple connectors and you're done. It makes it really easy to um, expand our production volumes. Uh, it makes it easy to kind of have production in different parts of the world and different parts of the U.S. And you know, everything from electrical to mechanical to the battery pack, Sandy Monroe has kind of been there on every step to say, simplify, simplify, simplify. And Use these common uh, engineering methods for this thing because that's, you know, what. And a lot of the, the design touches are just nice. Oh, I mean, the you. whole thing is just beautiful. Uh, Jason Hill's an amazing industrial designer. He has some, you know, beautiful vehicles that he's built over the years uh, with major companies. And now he's been a great asset to us to to make this you know, as, as user friendly as possible. Steve and I came to him and said, this is the mathematical solution for vehicle efficiency. It looks like a fish more than uh, any other vehicle you've ever designed. Where do we put the cut lines? What kind of materials do we use? How is the ergonomics gonna work? And that was decided by Jason when we just had you know, the math and science of, of how to make an efficient vehicle. Now you must have seen uh, Tesla's recent investor day where they said, we're going to an unboxed method. And you probably looked at that and said, that looks familiar. <laughs> uh, did you see that? I don't think I saw that part. Oh, so the new compact model is going to be a bunch of sub-assemblies that all come together in a single marriage at the end. Uh, we think that we've made strides that Elon has dreamt about. He would, he would love to have a Model Y body that's built of only six parts. He's talking about these big giga castings where, oh, I can make two sides of a body and a couple tops and a couple closeout sections, and that's the whole vehicle. Well, that's what Aptera is. Aptera is a tub and a spider and two body sides, and that, that's the whole vehicle. And we had the highest roof crush strength of any passenger car on the road. So it's strong, it's uh, easy to manufacture. That's what you get with an egg, right? Yeah. And that's as close to an egg as any any car I'd be willing to drive. Uh, it's, it's a lot of, you know, using Formula One protection methodologies versus using traditional automotive methodologies. You know, big box out sections that go over the roof means that this is just a very solid structure, whereas metal and aluminum, you know, they, they don't have any reflexive properties. Once they deform, they're deformed. Um, and, you know, fiber strength is much easier to calibrate than a homogenous material like steel or aluminum. Really? You basically run, you know, carbon fiber from there to there. You're able to calculate, you know, you're able to spread the loads much easier. Ooh, interesting. All right. Well, I think, I think, uh, I think that paints a pretty good picture. Uh, you guys have been asking for this video, so of course I had to do it. And uh, I think we, I think we covered the bases. We covered the price. We covered the timeline. We covered the advantages. We covered what Sandy brings to the table. What did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave it in the comments below. Uh, I might, uh, I will definitely read them, uh, but uh, we'll see what we get. Uh, and for everyone else, you know, like, subscribe, do the usual things. Huge thanks to my uh, patrons for the reason I'm able to go to events like this and get first-hand information directly from, I suppose, the horse's mouth. Uh, so, <laughs> so, for, so for everyone else, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to see uh, you clever robots, maybe even in person.